Hi and welcome to this video about database transactions and this is a short introduction to what transactions is and what they can be used for and why we're going to do them and lastly I'm going to show some examples in Java so you can see how we can do transactions using JDBC in practice when using uh, Java, the Java programming language. So let's start out with what transactions really is. You probably heard the term uh, when working with your bank or when trying to buy something online. It often has to do with wanting to transfer values from one place to another, but it can be other things as well. So oftentimes, and, and the most simple version of transactions could be that you had two bank accounts. Let's say you have your account number one here and you have another account over here called the account number two. So what we want to do in this case is let's say we want to move some some money here and let's say that this account has like eight hundred dollars in it and the other account also has like six hundred. And let's say you're the type of person who likes things to be balanced out. So you want to actually, what you want to achieve is you want to transfer like $100 from one account to the other. And if you want to do this, the money magically needs to go from here to here. And you, as you probably know, the bank doesn't actually have a box of money lying in the bank where, where they take a hundred dollar note and take it from the one of one of your account boxes and puts it in the other account box. It's all done on a computer. It's all done in databases. And this is where we would want a transaction. So what can we do when we are working with databases like this? There are different operations we can do. So these account, um, the amount of money you have would be in an account and that account would have like um, the sum of all your money in each of the accounts as a number just like this. So if I want to move $100 from one account to another, I would need to do that somehow. And you cannot magically just move something from one place to another like that, you would first have to do a couple of steps to make this work. So one of them is a way to do this is that you take the 800 over here and then you say, okay, I have the $800 now and I'm going to subtract $100 here And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. I have my $600 and I'm going to to add 100 here. So when we're looking at this, the sum is the same. So if we add these two uh, together, we get $1,400. And if we do this as well, it should give you uh, $1,400 as well. So this would equal 700 over here. And also this would equal like 700 over here. So this should be the end result. The problem with this is that there are actually two things involved in this. First of all, we need to subtract something from here and we need to add something from here. And the problem is that something might go wrong. So let's say that I start by subtracting the money from account number one first. So this is the first thing I do in my database. So I subtract the 100 from the 800. This is one atomic operation that the database can do. And then it would be, we would have $700 over here. If our database then for some reason crashes at this point, um, we would still have $600 over here and we would only have 700 over here. So the problem is we kind of took the money from our customer, but we didn't put them on his other account. So this is pretty bad because now the customer lost $100 because of our badly designed system. You could also do the opposite thing. You could say, okay, instead of subtracting 
I'm going to add, so that would mean we would have like 700 over here and then the system would crash. And over here we would have 800 because we didn't actually um, subtract anything. So now the customer got $100 more than he had before. This is also a problem. Now the bank loses uh, money. So it would of course be cool if the database could have some kind of functionality like, like a move functionality that could move values from one uh, place to another without this kind of problem. So what we're really looking at here, we're trying to do something like an atomic operation. An atomic is when you cannot divide an operation into smaller pieces. So something like subtracting a 100 and adding 100 is atomic operations in the database. And there's no way that you can go in between. It's not like when you're subtracting 100, it can crash and then you can go like you only uh, subtracted 50. It, it, computers doesn't work like that. So, so either it's done or it's not done. That's an atomic operation. So we have one atomic operation over here and we have another atomic operation over here. And what we're really trying to do is we want them to come together as one. So we want these two atomic operations to be one, what we call a transaction. So a transaction is just when we have multiple atomic operations that we bind together and call them a transaction. And this is supported by, by all major databases because this is a problem for, uh, databases and a lot of different scenarios. This is the simplest one I could think of. So when we have transactions like this, we want things to be done in one move. So the basis of a transaction is that either both of them have been done, both of the atomic operations have been done or none of them. So you can be sure when you're doing a transaction that Either, one, either both of them or none of them has been done. So this is the same if you buy something online. So let's say you're buying a new bicycle online. And for example, you shouldn't come in a situation where the company doesn't receive your money, but they are actually taken from your account. Or you shouldn't come in a situation where you have bought the bicycle and the money hasn't been taken from your account, but you actually get the bicycle anyway. So the last situation is probably better for you, but it's not a very good situation for the bank or, or the, the shop at all. So we want something where we can make sure that everyone ends up happy. So this is what we need transactions for. There are also other situations that are not as obvious as this one. For example, let's say that um, we have like two people going for this account. It could be me and my wife, for example. Uh, we could have these two people, one of them being at an ATM and the other one being in a shop. What if they try to withdraw money at the same time? So we could get into the same situation as, as this. So if we came in at the exact same th time, we could have a problem where uh, where one of them actually didn't see that the other one had already taken money. Because when you're withdrawing something, you also need to ha to read what was the original amount that you actually had on your account. So if I go, let's see, I'm here at an ATM and I read that I have $800. The ATM reads I have 800 and then my wife is at some kind of shop and she also reads 800. So the calculation becomes, I'm going to take like 200. So it becomes 800 minus 200. And then before this is being done, before this transaction is done, my wife also reads this amount and sees that there's 800. So it becomes 800 minus, let's say she takes 300. So this one would ultimately be that there was 600 left here. And because my, my wife's credit card didn't actually read 600, but it read 800, it takes the 300 from the, 
from the 800 and we get to 500. So after getting 200 and 300, $500 from the 800, we might end up with $500 or 600, which are both wrong. So there's also some concurrency problems here that multiple things can be done at the same time. And you probably, if you try to buy something that was on very high demand, you probably see something like this as well, that you have to kind of reserve it before you can buy it and you have it reserved for some time or something. So this all has to do with concurrency problems. And I'm going to go further into these um, in, my, in my next video. This is just trying to explain the basics of what a transaction really is. So to sum everything up, when we want to do transactions in a database, we go to these, um, these atomic operations and we try to make them into a single operation that cannot uh, be broken if something goes wrong along the way. So in the next video, I'll be looking at which kinds of transaction there is and what they're actually trying to solve, which kinds of problems. I already talked about there can be some concurrency problems, stuff like that. I'm going to look into that in my next video.